it's super important that we protect the brain because there's really, like I said, there's no point having a really healthy body if your brain starts to age first. Hi, nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, where are you tuning in from today? I'm in a, a new venue called Harvard Medical School. So this is my office at Harvard. Ah, that is so, okay, so you guys, you're getting a sneak peek into the office and we're moving up. Yeah. And, and the office is next to the lab, I'm assuming, where all the magic happens? Uh, yep, yeah, it's just uh, over that way encourage everyone who hasn't yet listened to episode seven of lifespan to go do that even if you don't get to do it right now go do that after this live so then you'll have reference to what we're we're speaking of that episode is called aging and the brain and it's it's an epic episode so i highly recommend that you go download listen and then listen to all the other ones if you haven't yet so then these lives and our episodes that we do here with q a will make even more sense to you because these are a follow-up to those episodes so yay so a lot of really really kind um comments today yeah. so appreciate you guys so did, you, did you mention that people with uh, negative comments don't belong here okay. um well, I, ha I didn't say that this time, so... Well, let, let me say it. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been great to see, especially with the last live, that people are, uh, for the most part, really positive and sharing their thoughts mm -hmm. and kindness. And that's what we want here. This is not a space for people to insult each other or insult the two of us. If you want to do that, there's you know, plenty of other places to go do that, but not here. This is a mm -hmm. special place that Serena has really built, and I'm just privileged to be part of. Well, no, we co-created this. So this is this is super <laughs> magical, and this is a beautiful community. It's a combination of both of ours, and we're really just here to serve you guys. So that's our housekeeping. And I've already let them know some of the topics we're going to try and cover. Um, you know how you can measure and reverse the age of your brain, and then the things that we can do um, between supplements and nutrition and exercise and meditation. Uh, things that we can do in our life. Sleep. Lifestyle. Sleep was just mentioned, so we'll cover that. Yeah sleep and stress we're going to try and cover all of it but if we don't get to all of it then we'll just do another an, a part two of it so you guys will stay stay tuned for that someone mm -hmm. said i like your haircut i like your haircut too mine yeah oh, i didn't actually i did get a haircut but i don't think you can tell <laughs> yeah well thank you there's a lot of really kind comments um i appreciate all of them so it's great okay. to be here so um, let's dive in since we're already like nine minutes in and I'm going to have to jump right at right at the top of the hour. Can, let's start with what causes brain aging, you know, and how quickly does the brain age? I mean, this is, I'm going to just let you roll with this and oh, not sure. interrupt. Uh, it's, it's fine. So brain aging is really interesting because it's, it's one of the few organs that we, we absolutely, absolutely cannot do without if we want quality of, of life. And the problem with medicine today is that we treat the heart, we treat kidneys, we know how to treat a lot of organs that are below the neck. But above the neck, we've been very poor at be, uh, being able to preserve the age of the, the youthfulness of the brain. And what we're ending up in society, uh, and many of our family members uh, end up this way as well, and it's totally tragic, is that the heart keeps beating, but the brain declines around the age of 70, and by the 80s and certainly 90s, there's a lot of dementia. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Uh, and what we want to do today is to talk about ways uh, when you're young, middle-aged, and even elderly and older to preserve the function of your brain and even improve the function of your brain if you started to lose some of that function. But the yeah. brain is actually can be preserved. It actually can age quite slowly. It's not like the ovaries in females where that's the, a very fast aging process um the brain actually ages quite slowly relative to other organs and it's partly because it's protected from toxins it's got a special blood brain barrier that protects mm. it it also has very good defense mechanisms but it's not perfect and it's actually susceptible to damage because those cells typically don't divide in your brain and you're okay. stuck with the ones that you have when you're born so you have to protect them because it's very hard to fix them though we are working mm. on that and i think our next slide we're going to cover that part of it uh, to, yeah. in terms of brain age reversal and mm -hmm. reprogramming. 
But before that technology is ready, let's just talk about things that we could do today. Uh, we'll talk about those things that we can implement today to slow down the aging of the brain. Yeah, I know. That's all the topics that um, we had shared uh, and that we'll cover. Uh, before we dive into that, maybe we should just highlight some things that it might be common for most people, but maybe not for others. What what things, what are contributing factors to the aging of the brain? Some people yeah. might not even have an awareness of what they're doing They may be aging their brain. Right. Well, the the real breakthrough was an understanding of what's driving aging in the whole body, but it's particularly important in the brain because mm -hmm. those cells have a lot of uh, me metabolism and a lot of free radical damage, and they can't easily just divide and, and kill off the dead cells. You, you cannot kill off your, your brain cells unless you want to lose your memory. Um, and so one of the processes that we identified and I talk about in Lifespan, the book, uh, mm -hmm. is DNA damage, but a particular type of DNA damage called a double-stranded DNA break. Essentially, your chromosomes will break, um, and every nerve cell, and in fact, every cell in your body has a few breaks per day. That's trillions per day. And mm -hmm. this reorganizes the structure of how the DNA is organized in three dimensions. And this affects how the genes are turned on and off. We call this epigenetic regulation. And mm -hmm. it's this change over time of which genes are on and off that leads to aging, we believe. And we have a lot of evidence for that. Mm -hmm. um, and what the process we've called it we call this process X differentiation. Uh, it was previously called dis differentiation, but we we tweaked that name. And actually, the you know Richard Cutler was the guy that deserves credit for that dis differentiation differentiation idea. The point is that X differentiation leads to cells losing their identity. Right. The, the identity of nerves um, is lost, so that nerve cells think that they're more like a skin cell or a liver cell, which is not good. And so you want to maintain that identity over time by keeping that structure of the DNA in three dimensions as perfect as it was when you were young. And there are mm -hmm. lots of ways to do to do that, which we'll talk about. Yeah, and so and for and so thank you for explaining all the science behind it. In terms of like what we do on a daily basis, exposure to toxins, you know, chronic inflammation, uh, chronic stress, um, poor diets, processed yeah. foods, these are all things that contribute to what David just explained. And and then and then now we're gonna kind of dive into the different things that you can do to offset that and just and, and reverse it really. Yeah. So okay, so what should we dive into first? Let's should we talk about um do you want to talk about supplements? Uh do you yeah. want to talk about okay. Yeah, because it it really it leads in from what we're talking about. That we want to take supplements that protect the DNA. Mm -hmm. So you don't want a lot of free radical damage. You don't want broken chromosomes. And we also want to boost the repair system so that the cell right. can send in proteins to join those chromosomes back together very quickly. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what we're talking about. And the mitochondria are key to that, that one of the most important parts of a nerve cell uh, are the mitochondria. We have thousands in each cell. And mm -hmm. in the brain and in muscle, they're really important because it, our, our nerve cells need a lot of energy to work. Mm -hmm. And over time, as you get older, those mitochondria are less active and you start to get brain fog and your nerve cells don't work, work, work as well. And eventually they lose their, their identity. And so mm -hmm. some of the supplements that I take, uh, and so I, I know you take, are aimed at boosting mitochond mitochondrial activity. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so the first one, first one we can talk about is metformin, which mm -hmm. we've talked about before. Yeah. Metformin is a, a drug to treat type 2 diabetes and lower blood sugar. And the way it works is it inhibits what's called complex one. It's a, it's a group of proteins involved in energy production, and it, it, it stops them from working efficiently. Mm -hmm. And in response, the cell says, oh, my goodness, I don't have enough energy. I'm going to make more mitochondria. So mitochondria, you can think of as little battery packs. So the, these little oh. battery packs are also seen as, um, you can think of them as bacteria. They used to be bacteria that swam around outside our cells, and then we merged them about 4 billion years ago. And mm -hmm. what we try to do is we, with metformin, we inhibit them a little bit so that they multiply to compensate. And so metformin will boost the amount of mitochondria, the number of mitochondria in your cells, and mm -hmm. has been shown to improve memory in, uh, in elderly people. Now, the mm -hmm. other supplement that I take every day is CoQ10, which is also part of this electron transport chain. And the levels decline with age, but they also decline when you take certain drugs. Um, in my case, I take a statin. Um, a torvastatin for my cholesterol, familial, it's a family issue. And, mm -hmm. uh, and CoQ10 is very important. And 
CoQ10 has been shown to be important for staving off diseases like depression. Mm -hmm. um, and that tends to happen increasingly as you get older. And mm -hmm. so supplementing that is important for cell function and for mental health. Mm -hmm. um, one other one that I take is alpha lipoic acid, which right. I actually did my PhD on. Um, and it, you would have seen it's up on the shelf there. Uh, the little molecule is, is important for the enzymes that, that make mitochondria function. And mm -hmm. lipoic acid actually is like a little motor in proteins that spins around and you make less of it as you get older. And mm -hmm. so I take um, a regular size supplement, one of those capsules that you can buy uh, every day. And I've been doing that now for about 15 years. Um, and I was actually told to, well, recommended to do that by uh, a guy called Denim, Denim Harmon, who invented the free radical theory of aging. And he mm -hmm. still worked at 92. He was in the lab at 92 when I visited wow. him. And uh, yeah, and he's my hero. And I, uh, I gave a talk at his institute. And uh, if he tells me to do something or recommend something, I'm going to do it. I've been doing it ever since. Um, and it's been really great. And my mental health, by the way, has steadily improved with these changes. Mm. You know, I, I was told that, and I, and I take it, that carnitine actually also helps and sometimes is taken with ALA because mm -hmm. it can have even, even better Yep. And Absolutely. And supporting the mitochondria. So, could you talk about that just for a second? And explain what um, L carnitine, what carnitine is. Well, carnitine is a a version of an amino acid that's uh, important for the body's metabolism, um, yes. and that if you're deficient in it, you just have less ability to generate uh, energy and maintain mitochondria. So, mm -hmm. taking it with ALA is, is really important. The other one um, I think we should mention is called PQQ. Yeah. Uh, which is a super potent antioxidant. It's mm -hmm. about uh, at least 10 times greater than resveratrol. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been shown to boost the levels of a, of a protein called um, neuron growth factor, neuronal yeah. growth factor. And um, that NGF is actually very important for the ability of nerve cells to survive and even produce new um, nerve growth. Uh, nerve in, in response to this growth factor. Mm -hmm. um, the other important thing about PQQ uh, and by the way, you can get it in things like kiwi fruit, um, yeah. and if you're a baby from mother's milk, it's yeah. actually uh, it stimulates a, a transcription factor, which is something that controls genes. And its name is CREB, C R E B. Mm -hmm. And CREB is really important for nerve health and and particularly for maintaining memories. Uh, and in this case, it also stimulates the mitochondria. So all of these things that we talked about have worked can work together to maintain the energetics. Uh, and the survival, uh, and and actually the 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 function yeah. of your neurons in old age. Yeah, and um, and for those of you asking, it is PQQ. Um, so PQQ, it's often found in combination with uh, with uh, CoQ10. Uh, I also I actually use ubiquinol, which is a different form of CoQ10. Uh, David, I don't know if you wanted to chat about ubiquinol for a minute, but um, it's 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 the same. It's just a more bioavailable form. And quite often when you're shopping for supplements, you'll see PQQ and ubiquinol in, in a blend together. And that might make it easier for those people who don't want to be taking too many supplements. Ubiquinol is a more soluble form of, and bioavailable form of CoQ10. And that is the one I take. Uh, I try to take as well. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so I think we've covered a lot of uh, brain supplements. We have, you know, and I think that a big part of why, you know, we're talking about brain supplements, but I think we should also talk a little bit about just brain health through gut health and just cover that a little bit. Um, I'm not, oh, actually, no, there's other, there's other supplements though. You know, we didn't talk about omegas, um, EPAs. DHA, uh, DHAs, even some vitamin D, should we cover those? Yeah. I mean, those yeah. those few were kind of focused on what David was saying about um, mitochondrial repair for the brain, but there's these other ones that we can get through food or you can take supplementary, supplementary. Mm -hmm. so check yeah, out that. Yeah, a big, big one that's been shown to help in brain health, this is this is shown in many different scientific studies, mm -hmm. uh, the omega fatty acids. These are mm -hmm. PA and DHA, which you can get in supplement form. They're typically a a squishy little uh, capsule um, gel. Uh, and so I take a, a gram or so of, of those substances, also combined with some oleic acid, which is an omega-9. These other two are omega-3s. Um, you can also get um, a fatty acid 
from plants is yeah. um, this is ALA, which is yeah. uh, alpha linoleic acid, mm -hmm. and uh, and so what are the what are the really good sources of ALA? I mean, you can get you can get them through if you're if you are not plant based, you obviously can get it through oily fish like salmon, mackerel, um, sardines herring, uh, but you can also get it through seeds. So flax seeds, chia seeds, um, walnuts, nuts and seeds are great sources um, of those oils. So that's, that's you know, if you're, if you're not wanting to take supplements, that's a way you can, you can get those omegas. Um, and then did you want to talk about any of the other, uh, any sure. of the other supplements? Okay. I mean, yeah. there, some of them are just sort of like basic supplements. And I think maybe cool. we can talk about magnesium too, because yeah. that has an effect on our uh, mental health, you know, on our stress levels. So Yeah. Well, so magnesium, you can be deficient in magnesium from your diet. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I measure magne my magnesium levels as do people um, mm -hmm. who, who I know. And they, uh, they supplement with magnesium, uh, typically a tablet. And there are various forms of magnesium. There's glycinate, stearate. Um, I'm, I'm not sure which is better. Right. For different, yeah, they're different for different people, right? Um, yeah. I know you've said that it depends on the person, but in well, general, I mean, they also so magnesium threonate is more for brain health, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the glycinate more for to kind of like relaxing the mind, but magnesium in the different forms will definitely serve. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. And, and no, you you know a lot about magnesium. I take it at night uh, these days to help me with my sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and so speaking of sleep, um, there are things we can do to take sleep. Maybe we'll, we'll leave that for later when we get to the sleep section. But uh, magnesium mm -hmm. is, is really important. I take NMN for my brain because we've shown in yes. animals that it improves blood flow, not just in muscles to make mice run further, but also prevents dementia. It can actually reverse mm -hmm. dementia in mice. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called vascular dementia. So if you ever have... Uh, grandparents or even great parents, great great grandparents that lose their memory, a lot of that is due to lack of blood flow in the brain. It's like mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease in the brain, and NMN in mice fixes that. The blood flow improves, and so I'm taking NMN every day. In part, not just because we think it's important for slowing aging and maintaining that structure of the DNA and helping repair the DNA, but also because it opens up and makes new blood vessels in the brain. Yeah, and then and and just to sort of piggyback off of that that's something that you can take supplementally that helps with blood flow but also just you know we've touched on it um movement you know exercise if you go if you do um lymphatic drainage if you use a pemf mat all these things can help with um uh, blood flow and flow with their and kind of dilate that microvascular system that also helps so there are so many different things that you can do supplements are one thing that you can do and you can also stack them um and with lifestyle and and food and other things so um okay so so should we talk about and then i i think you know we're talking specifically about these supplements that help with our brain health and that uh, and helping to repair that damage mm -hmm. but there's just also foods and supplements that are important for just overall brain health and supporting mm -hmm. brain health and a lot of them are, are basic vitamins you know whether it's vitamin d3 and b vitamins probiotics and prebiotics um vitamin c and e, they're all so important for for maintaining brain health so not just you know going from okay let's repair the damage but just maintaining what you have right now especially if you're if you're young and you want to focus on yeah. brain health yeah, and so to maintain the identity of your neurons, so your neurons don't become more like skin and fail, uh, mm -hmm. there are certain diets that we, we believe slow down aging. There, there are a number mm -hmm. of studies now that point to that, not just showing that you have improved health, but there was one study that showed that switching to a Mediterranean-like diet, which mm -hmm. I think you, you, you know is most more plant-based than, than meat, also with uh, a little bit of red wine if you want it, and mostly um olive oil rather than the saturated fatty oils from animals and well, this fat, yeah. Healthy, healthy yeah, yeah. yeah. and so the, mm -hmm. the studies show that the this these changes to cell identity uh we can measure this with what's called the dna methylation clock also known as the horvath clock um mm -hmm. it actually ticks more slowly when you eat a mediterranean diet which is another reason for, for saying that we should focus more on plants mm -hmm. and these kinds of types of foods but plants also contain molecules in them that that activate the body's defenses against aging. 
such mm -hmm. as the sirtuins. So sirtuins are enzymes yeah. that I've worked on. And, uh, and that's another reason I take NMN. They also activate sirtuins. But let me talk about one study. There was one longitudinal study. So looking at almost 2,000 people, and there was a 10% reduction in dementia risk for each time they, uh, they switched into a Mediterranean-like diet. And it correlated with better memory and better cognitive performance for those people. Mm -hmm. And so that's just one of many studies showing that what you eat really affects not just how intelligent and how much you can remember this week, but decades later. And that's so important to, to start early because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it can be too late once dementia is really set in. It's really hard to reverse it at that stage. Yeah, and I think that's, again, sort of a, of a running theme that we have here is just giving you guys the tools, all these reminders, things that you can do to be preventative, right? So, so that's, because as David said, reversing is much harder. So let's talk about some of those, you know, the, the different foods and the vitamins that you're really getting in high doses from um, a Mediterranean diet or a plant-based diet. So there's a there's a big focus on uh, foods that are rich in vitamin B, right? So and that is, we're talking leafy greens um, and, uh, and greens, you know, that have folate, B12, B6, B3, all of these, which we've chatted about, do, do help control your methylation clock. You can probably tell a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so if you look in my fridge, um... Mm -hmm. These days, it's pretty similar, I think, to your fridge as to all your recommendations. So I have uh, a lot of vegetables. I have um, dark green vegetables. So this would be mm -hmm. um, a lot of spinach. I have um, broccoli. Um, Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts. Yeah, yeah, so Brussels like sprouts this. with sulforaphane in there, which mm -hmm. is going to be very beneficial. Uh, and to boost the body's defenses against DNA damage, mm -hmm. which you know, drives the epigenetic changes and the clock. Um, so yeah, it's that's it. We legumes, um, sunflower seeds. I eat seeds during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, a bite of choc little dark chocolate, which yeah. has um, catechins in it, which are also very protective, and can also boost mitochondria. And matcha green tea. I've now switched from coffee to <laughs> green tea thanks to you, mm -hmm. and that's full of a uh, number of compounds. But the one that we think is most potent, scientists think, is ECGC, which right. is an antioxidant, but also is able to boost mitochondria like metformin by inhibiting it and causing a little bit of stress to those mitochondria so they react and produce more of themselves mm -hmm. uh, so that's in my diet serena what other things do you eat i'm sure people uh, love to well know. i do avocados that's something that's a part of my daily so i do oh, avocados. Like avocados. there's all kinds of seeds i do pumpkin seeds I, and black seeds chia seeds not every single day but a variety of seeds um obviously i do a lot of nuts and especially for brain health i do walnuts um and I love, as I, as I often share, eating the whole spectrum of the rainbow because of those, those uh, antioxidants and polyphenols. And so I do blueberries and apples and uh, turmeric is another great, uh, a, a great, it's a root and I do turmeric and ginger. Uh, we want curcumin, which is in the turmeric. And usually I have it with a little bit of black pepper, black pepper oil, either in a drink and a juice um, or in a latte. Mm -hmm. uh and then i i do obviously a lot of the greens that you mentioned and also other types of leafy greens kale spinach all of that i love um raspberries so i really try and focus on all the on the, all the colors brightly rich um colors and i also do um fermented foods so we really want those probiotics and prebiotics from fermented foods so whether it's like sauerkraut or um uh, yogurt, you know, I do uh, plant-based yogurt pretty much every single day. These are all things that are really important for supporting your gut, which helps to support your brain as well. So there's some of the, yeah. some of well, the things. Yeah, so most of the things you just mentioned uh, boost the levels of a protein called BDNF, brain-derived mm -hmm. neurotrophic factor. And mm -hmm. similar to nerve growth factor, NGF, that I mentioned earlier, uh, it's really important for maintaining nerve cell health and the growth of new nerves. And so it's yeah. now been shown that you can grow new nerves in a process um, that's called neurogenesis. And BDNF is very important for that, as well as forming new, new uh, what are called synapses. And what we find, we in my lab and other scientists find that as we get older, BDNF levels go down and the brain doesn't heal and grow and remember things very well. And by maintaining BDNF levels uh, during aging, by eating these types of foods, 
it has remarkable benefits. Uh, ECGC, for example, people who yeah. drink uh, matcha tea regularly have a 35% less chance of getting dementia with aging. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of studies showing that. So this idea that diet uh, isn't just improving you know, the taste and, and your, your body metabolism, it's actually affecting your brain. That's something that a lot of people fail to actually think about, uh, excuse the pun, but it's super important that we protect the brain because there's really, like I said, there's no point in having a really healthy body if your brain starts to age first. Yeah, and um, I just wanted to address a, a comment here about blueberries, wild blueberries versus a regular blueberries, 100%. Wild blueberries actually have 33% higher antioxidant values than regular blueberries. So you might not find them organic, obviously, because they're wild, but they're great. You can find them frozen almost anywhere. So even if you can't get them fresh, um, you can get them frozen. And it's also much more cost effective that way. Yeah, and they also have higher levels of molecules, which we talked about called yeah. xenohormesis uh, molecules. molecules. Yeah, so yeah. they're much higher in that. And and, um, and I also just wanted to touch upon adaptogens um, as as something that helps to increase BDNF. And so adaptogens are like ginseng and uh, holy basil and ashwagandha, um, goji cola, ginkgo. There's, this is a huge part of my, uh, uh, I guess, protocol, my daily lifestyle is I take them in either supplementally or in teas or in tinctures. So I am someone that is a huge fan of adaptogens, which I know we'll focus on in a different episode, but those are also, um, those are also known to help um, increase your levels of BDNF. Yeah. So... Okay, so I feel like we covered, actually, we're doing really well here. We've covered quite a few things. Mm -hmm. um, we can do lists of foods if people want that, but I feel like we've already gone over a lot of general groups. I've, I've got um, a list for, sure. so for foods that have PQQ. Remember that the PQQ is that there's mm -hmm. a molecule that boosts mitochondria. Yeah. Uh, we can talk more about that one. That This is a molecule yeah. that's been shown to, that was discovered, oh, maybe 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. and uh, has been shown to be really important for a lot of enzymes, including the enzyme that gets rid of uh, alcohol in your body. And when you take it, you boost your mitochondrial activity. It's another one of those really important ones mm -hmm. we mentioned. And you can also get it not just in supplements, but from, from foods, yeah. such as spinach and parsley and kiwi, green pepper, carrots. Cabbage. Yeah. Even bananas, a few bananas. Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat bananas, but sure. Well, and um, and in papaya, and um, and even in parsley. You know, I parsley and cilantro are kind of two herbs that I encourage people to try and put in their daily diet, whether it's in juice form or you can throw it into a smoothie or you cook with it. So many, so many health benefits from something like parsley, which you you wouldn't guess does, but parsley also has some PQQ in it. Uh, so so that's a great kind of a great reminder on that, and um, and it's also in. Uh, in one of our trusted resources too, it's in one of the products that we use, the uh, Neuro Serum, the Neuro RX that we use. And so that's, it's also there. Um, yeah, green tea much also high in PQQ. So there's a lot of different places that you can, you can get these uh, molecules, these compounds, things that help your body and help your brain uh, other than just supplements. So it's, it's, I mean, I do both, you know, and I think David does too. You're kind of getting it from both um, from both your foods, from food-based sources, as well as uh, supplementally. Yeah. Okay. Good. So what, what about chatting about sleep? Yeah, let's chat about sleep and the different things that you can do to help your sleep. Um, okay, so let's what? talk about sleep and, and what happens when you don't have enough sleep and why your body needs sleep, why your brain needs sleep. Uh, yeah, well, it's... It's clearly one of the most important things for, for longevity is to maintain mm -hmm. good sleep patterns. And you can get away with less sleep if you sleep deeply. And there yeah. are a number of hacks we can, we'll talk about in a second how to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's been shown very clearly both in animal studies and in humans that people who have lack, lack of sleep tend, tend to develop chronic diseases, mm -hmm. including dementia um, mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that struck, struck me was a 2022 study, a recent one, that having sleep apnea, which I think I suffer from a little bit, is uh, a loss of the uh, ability to breathe correctly during sleep, and it disrupts your sleep. It actually, some of these people on average um, developed 
all sorts of uh, issues with their brain. They had increased markers for Alzheimer's disease. Well, it um, also reduces your BDNF too, right? When you don't have enough sleep. It definitely does. And this is uh, one of the problems. If you don't eat the right foods and you don't get enough sleep, together you, your nerves just end up not growing and forming memories. So that's really, really... And stress. And if you have too much stress and you don't yeah, and, that, it yeah. also affects sleep. Exactly. And, and then you get inflammation in your brain. So there's a, a protein that goes up with aging um, that's really uh, important that um, the... IBA1, it's called, and we can stain that in the brain and we see it go up. And lack of sleep and also just chronic stress leads to increases in that. Um, and so you want to keep your stress levels down, mental stress. And we also now know that the brain is definitely controlling the body's immune system. And so you can lose your immunity as well if your brain is, is not relaxed and getting enough sleep. What we've discovered as scientists over the years is that there are proteins that that go up with aging and are markers of inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, IBA1 is, is just one that we use. Mm -hmm. um, one that's particularly bad for you is amyloid beta, beta amyloid, mm -hmm. which is a protein that when it's cut into certain sizes, it will become insoluble. And that accumulates both inside cells and outside of cells and outside neurons. Uh, and Alzheimer's patients have a lot of what are these called, what are called plaques in the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are a number of drugs that are, are aimed at getting rid of those plaques, uh, antibodies that bind to them. And there are cells in the brain that move around that actually eat up those uh, those proteins, but they don't do a very good job as we get older. And one of the, the things that people are trying to do to cure or at least treat Alzheimer's is to target those proteins. Uh, but what you want to do really that's easier is to prevent them from forming in the first place. And uh, one of the enzymes that we work on called CERT1, one of the CERT2ins, is very good at, at preventing the buildup of beta amyloid in the brain. And so that's why exercise, uh, eating a little less often, as well as taking supplements like I do, NMN, uh, I believe are very good ways at slowing down the accumulation of these little protein fragments that can crystallize uh, and actually become insoluble and disrupt neurons. And it's like trying to clean out um, the trash after it's accumulated, whereas you know, if you do recycling throughout most of uh, the week, it's a lot easier to take out the trash at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So what are some uh, sleep tips that we can offer people to kind of maximize the amount of sleep you're getting in the most reparative way possible for your brain and your body? Yeah. Uh, well, one thing that most people don't know about me is that through most of my 20s and 30s, I had uh, extremely difficult um, um, sleep patterns. I was, I basically was approaching depre depression because I wasn't sleeping enough and I had to figure out ways to fix it. And so, like I say, with my diet, um, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to doing things. So if I can fix my sleep patterns, I think pretty much anybody can. And I started to do a few things that worked for me, and I've now got this whole program, which I'll tell you about now. Um, so I start with trying to be calm at the end of the night. I don't watch TV late at night, and I try my best not to look at screens, though it's increasingly difficult. And I turn down the blue light in my screen. Um, I wear some blue light blocking glasses uh, most nights, unless I'm you know, being sociable and I don't want to look like too much of a nerd. But I find that that really does help with my eye strain as well. Me and too. I try, try not to, uh, I try to, to just read or nowadays you turn me on to meditation and do that just before sleep. And often that puts me to sleep. Uh, and so that's working. Um, I also take some supplements. I take uh, GABA, GABA and L-theanine and this magnesium uh, that we talked about earlier. And that combination is typically enough. I have a warm drink. Sometimes I have a shower these days. I, I like that more and more. And that just puts me in a very calm state. Uh, I reduce the temperature of my bed. I have a bed that, re that you can control the temperature. Um, and being a little cooler is very good. And particularly during the night when it's cool, I sleep. Most people sleep more deeply. Mm -hmm. um, and those are, the, those are the main hacks. If I can't get to sleep, I have other things that I think, I, actually, I know, Serena, you, you don't think are uh, necessarily the best things, such as melatonin uh, and even Ambien. But I don't take those um, very often unless I absolutely need to get to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at you. I think you're starting to shake. You were so upset. I, 
<laughs> I don't think that Ambien is necessary because we can train and retrain our bodies um, from, you know, the, and, and, and in some cases, in some severe cases, yes, but I think for the average person between diet and lifestyle and movement and meditation, then you can definitely get into a place where more natural um, and and sort of lifestyle habits can really get you to into that state where you won't necessarily need ambient and melatonin. It's not, you know, melatonin is something that we make in our body. So it's not bad, but there has been, and just recently, I'm going to have to send it to you. I think I just found it today, but recently there's, um, you know, there's, there's been studies have shown that daily use of melatonin, not to say that you do, but for people who do um, use melatonin daily, it actually doesn't have, it has some adverse effects mm. if you're using it daily. Yeah. But, you know, there's different things. There's um, some herbal uh, herbal support too. You know, there's, there's passion flower and there's valerian root and there's chamomile. Um, there's tulsi. There's different teas and natural plant-based uh, options for that too and then I also love you know I love uh, uh, using magnesium as well um, and then it, there's some natural melatonin that's in tart cherry juice so for people who want to have a little bit of that before bed that's also helpful for sleep to kind of get to your body into that state or if you guys have heard of banana have you guys heard of well I, I'm asking like nobody I'm asking you so <laughs> banana peel if oh, no. you boil if you boil a mm. banana peel, if you're someone that doesn't know, there's science to this. It's because there's such <laughs> high amounts of magnesium in the actual peel. So um, for people who don't want to take um, a supplement, especially at night, some people have a hard time swallowing pills, um, then what you can do is you can take a banana and you can boil it and let it simmer. And then if you drink some of that, that actually has high amounts of magnesium, natural magnesium. Just, just to be clear, you boil the peel or the banana? The peel. So you actually just want to boil the peel. So you mm, want to you want to unpeel tasty, the banana. Yeah. So well, well, I guess it tastes good. Um, okay, wash your helps. banana really well. Mm -hmm. So right. so it's another natural thing. If you don't feel like taking a pill, it's not for everyone. Um, yeah. Well, I will so say, some, mm -hmm. I will I will credit you that I I don't need melatonin often, and I don't need Ambien. I need mm -hmm. it very very rarely. And it's thanks to you because you, you have given me these tips. And so I, I actually think I could get away with not having my Ambien anymore. It's really just for total emergencies when I'm completely, I'm on a flight, for example, and I can't get to sleep. Mm. But yeah, I totally agree with you. And I've gone from needing it almost every other day to now I rarely even need it. And it's it's really thanks to you. And one thing I would say about those drugs and, and melatonin as well is that the doses, in my view, though I'm just a PhD, not an MD, is that they're really high. And that for me, I, I would only need a, a tiny little bit instead of a 10 milligram of melatonin or 10 milligram of yeah, that's a lot. Ambien. I, I would take more like two or three milligrams and that was sufficient for my body to get mm -hmm. to sleep. Yeah. But um, even now it's, now it's closer to zero very rarely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, yeah, someone said, no, you don't eat the peel. It's just for making the tea. <laughs> just for making the tea. So don't don't eat the peel. Just just um just boil it and then just drink a little bit of it. And you know you can put other things in it. You can put lavender. You can put some chamomile. This is just all um options. So it's not for everybody. Um, but for those of you that prefer a tea at night, and I think sometimes drinking something warm at night also helps. Um, as you were saying, uh, sometimes having a warm drink at night can help. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, cool. So we've talked about some of those. Um, I love that you also incorporate meditation into the end of your day to kind of help you ease into sleep. Um, that's a great practice. Hey, so, we were talking about uh, meditation. I'd like to talk a little bit about that because I'm, I'm a novice to this and, okay. and I can talk from the perspective of um, of someone who's just learning how to do this and the effect it's having on my life. Mm -hmm. How about that? Okay. Okay. Maybe talk about that for a second. Anyone who hasn't tried meditation, um, mm -hmm. you should definitely try it. Mm -hmm. I uh, w actually was taught by Serena how to do it. I use it, a device that shines light in my eyes. It helps. But I found that just, just as little as 11 minutes a night uh, allows me to sleep much better and actually get away with less sleep. And uh, it's been really quite amazing effects on my ability to 
to sleep and then get through the day and, and have much less stress during the day. And yeah. I, I listen to music. I don't like to listen to people talking to me, but but I've just found that now I really miss it if I don't do it because my stress level keeps going up and up and up and this resets it. And I want to thank you, Serena, for, for doing this. It's been a change in my life. I'm sure, I should have done it years ago. Well, you're welcome. I'm so glad that it is. Um, and you'd be happy to know that there's actually a lot of studies that show the, benef the benefits of meditation. Um, there's a study at UCLA that's found that long-term meditators, they actually have better preserved brains than non-meditators. So, you know, it, there's, there's studies that show that it helps to preserve that aging brain. I mean, there are uh, studies at John, Johns Hopkins, at Harvard, as you know, um, at Yale, that all show how it can reduce the brain activity. It, can, it helps with depression. There's so many different things. Um, Somebody's so asking how to get started on meditation. What do you? What's your recommendation? Uh, I so there's different types of meditation. There's concentration meditation. There's heart-centered meditation. There's mindfulness. There's uh, tai Chi Qi Gong. There's transcendental meditation. There's so many different ones. And for people who who have a hard time creating time um, to do it, I would say just do a little bit of breath work. I mean that's what that's what we did. Right, Dave, that we just started with a little bit of breath work, four counts. It's something that I can I can share and post here. I've shared it before. I just call it the four four four. And you're just breathing in four counts. Um, and you're holding that for four counts and then you release for four counts and then you pause for four counts and you do it again. So I just got a I just got a sign that said it's time. So what we can do is we can even actually do like a short live where we can walk everyone through like a guided breathwork meditation, we can focus a little bit more about it and what it's doing for your body and your brain um, and the different types of meditation. But I would say, I would say do a little bit of breathwork. It kind of eases you from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic state. Then your mind can sort of relax and you can be in the present. Uh, and then transcendental, transcendental meditation, TM, is another great um, form of meditation that I've found to be really beneficial. But that does require 20 minutes twice a day. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is that most often we judge ourselves when we're trying to meditate. Our mind's still going. We're thinking about our next meeting or what we have to do or the email we didn't send. We can't seem to quiet our mind. With TM, you, it's you're almost giving yourself permission to have another thought because you have a mantra that you go back to that's sort of your home base. So your mind starts to wander and you get spinning and you just remind yourself of that mantra, which is your home base, and you go back to your home base. And then your mind may wander again and you just go back to your home base. And so over time, you're able to, to go more minutes without your mind wandering and then it becomes 20 minutes. And we really should talk more about this on another episode because it does, it can help with um, telomere length, it can increase your DHEA levels. There's so many benefits. And, yeah, and I can see questions about how do we do it? How do I do it? What do I listen to? We'll definitely mm -hmm. cover all of that. But as I mentioned right now, I'm using a device that that sits on my head that allows me yeah. to do that. It's in our trusted resources, you guys. If you go there, you'll see something called Brain Tap, and it's um, you know something that I recommend to a lot of people. Uh, kind of get, it get, helps to get you started. It's almost like training wheels. So it gets you started, and then once your body and your mind is in that state and that flow, you're able to do it without that device. Um, but it's a great uh, hack. You know, yeah, it's a great I love it, and I'm a beginner, and it's working great. For me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. Um, okay, you guys, so we're coming up on time, so we're going to have to, and I, there's so many things we didn't talk about, but I just, I feel like we could probably do a whole series on brain um, and yeah. keeping the brain young and expand on every one of these things. So, so I don't know, maybe that's something, that's something to discuss. So. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. I know that some people had issues with the, the email sign up, but I still encourage you go if you don't get an email and we need a couple days. So I know that you want the replay like in a minute, but the team does need a couple days to clean everything up, sync up the audio and video, type up all the notes. So give us, you know, maybe three days and you should get a link to that, but you should get a welcome link um, when you sign up. And that is to all the notes and the replays for this longevity lifestyle series. Go to David's link in bio or mine and you can sign up there. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you, David.
Bye, Serena. Bye. Bye.